All I'm going to be doing is just running around these big sand spots looking for logs in the water basically. Just a long five foot, six foot long tarpon and then multiple in parallel as they work, swim around in schools. That's what we're looking for right there. That's a massive school of tarpon. Holy crap. Oh. Look at all of them. The whole road there. I can get this without falling in. I don't have any of my tarpon stuff rigged. Oh, that spooked them. Look at that column of them. Oh, it ran into my line. Look at all those tarpon. Holy crapplers. Those guys left. That's what we were looking for. And there they go. Bam! They are here, time to get ready. Well, that big school that pushed through is basically what it is. It's a big school migrating. They're pushing through. I generally don't target those very often. I prefer them when they break up and then you find them in these holes out here laid up, meaning they're not swimming around. Those ones that came through here, they're going from point A to point B and they're not really feeding, they're just staying with the pack and just trying to get to where they want to be but then you find little pocket ones where it's just one or two or three and they're laid up in those kind of sand holes feeding and that's a little bit more what uh, i'm looking for but uh, seeing those big schools are good uh, if i get another one come through and then i'll basically just follow them around until i can find them but so far so good all right, so I guess that's good enough of a sign that they're here. <laughs> I'm going to find some place a little calmer and get rigged up. There's that school over there. Well, the tarpon are definitely here, so time to get rigged up. I generally like to wait until I see some before I convert over. Uh, so let's get these rods rigged and I'll show you what I've got. Well, I saw that one school and that was it for the rest of the evening. I think I saw one solo uh, tarpon and that was it. So they're coming, but just not in massive waves yet. Uh, I think the bridges are starting to fill up. The back country is starting to see them. But the Atlantic side, the rest of April, they'll really start filling in and getting into all the holes and channels and so forth. So see a lot more guys out there. I didn't see a single uh, flats boat out there on the Atlantic side. So I know the main uh, migration hasn't started out there. Otherwise, those guys would be lined up. But I figured it'd be a good time to kind of do a quick uh, gear review. Um, last year, I kind of bypassed the big tarpon season because uh, I spent the whole time just prospecting all the Middle Keys Islands. So it took a lot of time to just get everything mapped out. So I'm pretty good now in all the areas of the Keys, Middle Keys. So uh, we'll put a little bit more quality time on the tarp, the big tarpon uh, this year. Uh, but I would definitely recommend watch my Sight Fishing 101 series. Uh, there's a specific playlist for that. That'll be very important coming up through this spring and summer. Uh, not only for these big tarpon, uh, but all the flats fish, uh, permit, uh, bonefish, juvenile tarpon, redfish nook. Everything will be just sight fishing heaven coming up here. So uh, definitely watch those videos. But otherwise, I figured I'll go in and kind of give you a gear listing of my uh, big tarpon gear. So uh, let me show you what I got. First, you got to start off with the All About the Bait Bridge Tarpon shirt. Um, I've got one focused on the blue crab guys and one for the mullet guys. Uh, those are the predominant baits used to fish the, uh, the Middle Keys large bridges. Uh, I'd say probably 50 to 60% of the tarpon caught will be caught on the main bridges in the Middle Keys. So definitely have to kind of dress to impress. Show your uh, bridge fishing pride there with the All About the Bait uh, tarpon shirt. 
Alright, so let's get into my hardware. Uh, basically, I've got a fly box and then I've got a standard rigs for my tarp and stuff. Uh, we'll do a kind of review of these in my photo studio. But for my rod and reel setups, uh, starting from the front, I've got a couple of fly rods. Uh, in the front, I've got a TFO 10 weight, it's the Pro 2. Uh, that is matched up with a 10 weight Reddington Behemoth with a 10 weight intermediate uh, semi sinking line. Uh, it's also my permit rod, but uh, this will also work good in a little bit deeper waters for the tarpon. Um, next to it, I've got a 12 weight. It's a, basically a Bass Pro Shops combo that I swapped out the reel for a Nether Reddington Behemoth 12 weight, uh, 12 weight line floating. Um, the rod is a, a De Deceiver series. Uh, it's a broomstick. It's solid, very little flex. Caught a lot of tarpon on it, and it's great for just hauling them in, but it's not fun at all to throw a fly. Um, I'm lazy, and uh, it's a lot of work whipping that fly out there because it's so uh, sturdy. Uh, that's kind of the reason why I prefer the 10 weight. It's a lot more floppy, more uh, fun to throw a bigger fly with it. Uh, so those are the two fly rods. Uh, spinning reel, I've got the uh, Esky series rods. They're uh, custom made here in uh, Key West. They're 100% carbon rods. They're not a tube, they're just full thick car uh, carbon uh, built through and through. Um, I've got the uh, 20 weight, which is their heavy, heavy duty uh, spinning rod, seven foot. I've got it matched up with the Quantum Cabo 60, and I've got 80 pound braid on that. Uh, this is a good uh, multi-use because I could use it to throw the, the larger soft plastics, my nine inch paddle tails, the big hoagies, my seven inch flukes, uh, and handle those well, but then it'll also cast really well uh, a live mullet, uh, pinfish under a bobber, uh, blue crab under a bobber, and handle those perfectly well. Um, next to that, I've got my uh, um, Esky 1520. It would be rated kind of a medium heavy. I've got a Quantum Cabo 50. Uh, that's got uh, 30 or 40 pound braid on it. Also seven foot. Uh, for this rod, it's basically use it for throwing my uh, medium weight soft plastics. So primarily throwing artificial. Um, it works really well. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it so I can cast easier. Even the smaller soft plastics will be fine if I have to throw a, a four inch paddle tail because the uh, tarpon are chasing pilchards. Uh, this one will throw a lot better than the heavy. Um, after that, we've got the uh, my favorite uh, tarpon rod, which is this nine and a half generic. Uh, it's originally made to be a, a walleye downrigger trolling rod uh, but I brought this from the mainland and I love this rod it used to be my old uh, saltwater uh, salmon trolling rod uh, nine and a half I call it my noodle rod it's just super flexible uh, I also use it for vertical jigging because it has such a long throw to it so I can really pull up that jig a long ways and let it flutter down and then when I fight fish, it's got that major just bend to it and it just keeps that constant pressure on the fish. And for the uh, tarpon, it works really well for specifically launching big live baits, big mullet, uh, again, the pinfish and a bobber, blue crab on a bobber, I can launch them a mile because it's nine and a half foot long, super flexible. And then on the tarpon side of it, because of that flexibility, it takes away a lot of mistakes that I make. Uh, drags too tight, drags too loose, uh, super violent jumps, runs, shakes, all that. That rod just absorbs it all, so I don't have to do anything. The rod just basically will flex 10 feet down without a problem and uh, absorb all that movement that that tarpon does. So it uh, really flattened things out and uh, really good rod for that part. But uh, those are my hardware. So uh, let's go check out my boxes. All right, let's take a look at my fly box. Dump those out here. See what we've got. Uh, one of the things that I definitely carry is the Palolo worm hatch flies. They're Palolo worm flies. Uh, nothing worse than uh, being down here and then all of a sudden all these tarpons start rolling all over the place 
and you can't catch them and you don't know why, most likely it's because it's the Pololo worm hatch and you don't have a Pololo worm fly. So definitely would recommend having those just in case that happens. Um, I carry uh, quite a few different of these uh, EP streamers. See, these are pretty much all beat up and probably garbage now, but uh, purple and black is one of my favorites for throwing in the channels, but uh, they resemble uh, pinfish, so uh, I tend to have quite a few of those, and then a few just miscellaneous tarpon uh, flies there. Kind of see through there. There's a more, well, one little streamer and then some crabs for permit. Another tarpon. So just a few different uh, varieties and then leaders for, mainly these are permit leaders. I hand built my uh, tarpon ones out of a thicker uh, leader, but uh, more of the uh, EP streamers. Um, but I would recommend doing is, when you get here, just go to one of the local fly shops and just say, Hey, I'm going to be fishing now. Um, if you know the kind of type of uh, fishing you're going to do, whether it be strictly on the flats, uh, the channels, the bridges, the uh, outside edge migrating route on the Atlantic side flats, um, and can be as specific as possible, they can narrow down kind of what the fly of the month is and kind of get you in the ballpark a lot faster. So uh, that would be my best recommendations on the fly. But definitely pick up a Palolo worm just to have, just in case, a few of those. All right, let's take a look at my tarpon box. Here. All right, we've got leader. Um, I generally carry 40 pounds, 60 pound, 40 pound for throwing artificials, 60 pound when I'm doing uh, live bait, uh, drifting baits. Uh, also, when I'm want more leverage in regards to landing an actual tarpon uh like getting it in my hand landing it i'll go up to the 60 and then uh i did usually carry 80 pound especially when i was doing night fishing or dirty water or specifically when i want to land a actual tarpon and get the picture i'll throw 80 on there that way i could really horse them in Got those these have my hooks so a lot of seven knot hooks, five knot hooks, bigger hooks for the tarpon. Seven knot I use for uh, the mullet, uh, bigger pinfish, bigger crabs. It just gets a better hook set. Um, but then I also have some five knots for smaller crabs, uh, uh, smaller pinfish, pilchards, and whatnot. So those are just my circle hooks. Uh, this one has my bait catching stuff. So some four pound uh, mono leader and then some small hooks, small weights, um, and that just helps me for when I'm wanting to catch pinfish. So I got everything right there. Keep a few bobbers because uh, bobber fishing, uh, you gotta have them if you're floating crabs, pinfish. Uh, you need to have something that keeps them from going straight to the bottom, so I always keep a few bobbers. That brings us to the soft plastics. Uh, start smaller to bigger. Uh, I just keep a variety of uh, four inch paddle tails, the all about the bait standard four inch paddle tails, um, plus rigging kits for them. Uh, like I said, is uh, sometimes they'll be feeding on pilchards, so that's what you have to match the hatch. So I've got the four inch pitch, uh, paddle tails there. Then uh, I move up to the uh, all about the bait seven inch flukes. Um, Tarpon are tend to be up feeders, so I like to work the top of the water column, uh, especially when I'm sight fishing, so it tends to be more shallow water on the flats. Um, but uh, definitely want something that you can suspend and keep higher in the water column. So I've got the seven inch flukes, different colors. Um, pink is one of the few times where I'll use, or big tarpon is one of the few times that I'll use the, the kind of brighter colors ever. So uh, I've got the pink there, especially on the flats. Uh, sometimes, for some reason, it gets them excited. I've got the green pilchard and then the white one that kind of resembles the mullet. And that's the standard flukes with the rigging kits there. Um, allows me to rig them uh, weedless, which helps out a lot, especially when you're doing topwater stuff. Uh, next up, we've got the uh, nine inch paddle tail and rigging kits. Uh, these are my mullet representatives. 
and uh, a lot of times I'll troll these around, throw these at nighttime. Uh, down in the lower keys, those are like Sharp Channel, any of the outlets, by the bridges, uh, especially more towards summertime when the uh, mullet are in tight. Uh, they'll hammer these big nine inch paddle tails because you're basically matching the hatch with those. Then uh, one of my old time favorites uh, is the uh, big hoagies. Um, these are like, uh, I think the 10 inch, but I also throw the seven inch as well. Um, and then the uh, all about the bait rigging kits. I use those with these hoagies. Again, top water, big profile there. Uh, the nine inch paddle tails are big bait, but you have to swim them in order to get that uh, paddle tail wagging. These are, are more kind of like what well, you can jerk bait and then they'll kind of swim like a, uh, a snake. Um, these kind of resemble a needlefish. They'll resemble kind of a, uh, a mullet as well, but I like these because you can suspend them, run them weedless, and then just run them along the top. Um, white during the day, black during the uh, nighttime, and pink on the flats is what I use there. So that's kind of my, uh, my big tarpon, uh, tarpon box and what I carry for those. All right, there you go. The tarpon are here. The gear I use, what else do you need to know? So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.